Since before the Wright brothers took their first flight near Kitty Hawk, North Carolina, we have all wished for wings. In this segment, we catch up with a few Pocono paramotoring pioneers. My friend and I were online looking for some different types of extreme sports, uh, mostly uh, having to do with like paragliding and uh, speed wing flying, and we stumbled across uh, this sport. Uh, Tucker Gott has a YouTube channel and was demonstrating flying a powered paramotor and we were very intrigued by it. So I said to him, hey, I'd like to see how this sport works. Would you be willing to show me? From that point forward, I was hooked on it. Myself and my friend Austin are the two pioneers in the northeastern corner of the lake region. We're, we're the first two. So we're kind of the pioneers in starting this sport. And it seems to be really taking off. There's a lot of people showing interest. I know of three people right now training in the area. Uh, that will be flying probably before the end of the year. I got into the sport a long, well, it started a long time ago. So when I first learned of it, it was from YouTube videos. Way back in the day when everything was still really primitive and it basically set the idea in my mind of the convenience, the freedom, what you could do with it. And it took probably 12 years until I turned 18, um, until I could afford it. And then I, I jumped in head first. If I could transport anyone up into the sky right now, they could fly a paramotor. It's super simple, super easy. You have left, right, and you have a throttle, which is up and down. So anyone could do that part without any, like, just basic instruction. But the takeoff is the really, really hard part, and it's the thing that takes the longest to master, but it's the first step that you have to take to get into the air. So it starts out laying out the glider. You wanna lay out your glider really neat and tidy, you want to make sure all your lines are going where they have to go. There's no tangles. Um, you set that out nice and easy. After that, we stick the motor on our back and we'll do like a thrust test. Just run it up, get it warm, make sure it's putting out all the power you need. You clip into the glider facing away from it. The whole takeoff is just a balancing act. You have two controls in your hands, you have two more lines that help inflate the glider that are pulling on the leading edge of the fabric, then you have the throttle balancing your other hand, and now the motor's running, so it's vibrating, it's a little intimidating, it's making noise. If you aren't steady on the throttle, it'll push you over. So you start running forward, and it's a very awkward run. You keep on the power, and you add a touch of brake pressure, and that just gives you a little more lift, and you just float into the sky. And the cool thing is, it's like running into the sky. The sport has been around for, I don't know, 25 years or so. But in current years, it's just skyrocketed as far as technology. The motors have gotten lighter, they've gotten more reliable. Um, the wings have advanced in technology like insane. So the wings are made out of lighter material. They're made so that they're a lot safer, they're more user friendly, they are more stable in turbulence. So all of that has really allowed people to get into the sport easier. The engine itself, they're mostly single cylinder two-stroke engines anywhere from 80cc up to 280cc. Generally, the motor I fly puts out about 25 horsepower, which equates to about 175 pounds of thrust. For me, it's a lot of power. So currently, to get into this sport, you sign up for training first. A lot of the programs, the last one to two weeks, and in that time, the instructor will teach you all of the knowledge that you need to know as far as weather, airspace, regulations, and then you actually go out in the field and you learn how to handle a glider, you learn how to handle the motor. Eventually you put everything together and normally on the third to fourth day, if you have good weather, you'll be flying on your own. You go home with the foundation to continue learning by yourself. It seems like a lot of people, they'll try to jump to a very advanced wing really quick just to make it easy, but you can get yourself in a lot of trouble because we're flying around in the air, it can get dangerous. Um, so generally about 100 flights or 100 hours is a good benchmark before you start uh, to progress and go to like your second wing. So you start out with a beginner wing, it'll be very safe, very stable, 
and it won't be that maneuverable, but you can still rip it around um, once you learn how to. There's a lot of aspects of safety to consider. The top two most common things that we see in the sport is ground starting a motor and it takes off and hurts your body on the ground or landing in water. Water drownings are very serious and we don't want to play around with water at all. We do have flotation devices that we can take with us uh, that activate if you hit the water and will keep you afloat. One of the things about the sport is it's very, very dependent on weather. From the outside looking in, a lot of people might think that you can just fly any time of day as long as it's not raining, but really that's not true. Uh, the big thing is turbulence for us. In an environment like this where there's rolling hills, 10 miles an hour is a good idea of maybe you shouldn't be flying if it's windier than that. Enough turbulence can collapse your wing and you don't want that. So it's best to make the decision to not put yourself in that situation. One of the really cool and beautiful things about this sport is it can be whatever you want. It can be the most relaxing morning flight over fog and just therapeutic and peaceful, or you can get on an advanced wing and it can be the biggest adrenaline rush ever. And a pilot can get to an advanced level within a year or two, and at that point they can be doing wing overs, barrel rolls, um, you can do tip drags where you come down close to the ground and touch your wingtip on the ground. Foot drags are a lot of fun, you just come down and skim your feet. It takes a lot of like fine control. One of the magical things I think about this sport is that you're taking a piece of nylon, a bunch of strings, and then a two-stroke engine on your back with a harness, and you're flying through the air. It's like a magic carpet. It's just an insane thing to wrap your mind around. It's just so open and free. You feel like a bird. There's nothing in front of you. Your arms are up. You're just relaxing, and it's just the most beautiful panoramic view. So it's kind of hard to be scared or stressed in that environment. Statistically, it's about as safe as commercial aviation, so the sport as a whole is really, really safe. I have a group of friends that we're all 18 to 25 and we fly air show demonstrations and that's kind of, there really is no younger age limit. As long as you can lift the motor, you can get into it. This is just an amazing sport. I've never been so drawn to anything in my life. My job is a very stressful job. I have a lot of pressure during the day, during the week, and when I get in the air, it's the next thing to heaven. So the Pocono Mountains here is like one of my favorite places to fly. This area is super beautiful. Out of the whole country, like if I could pick one spot to fly the rest of my life, it would be something like this. The rolling hills, the mountains, the farmland, it's just my favorite place to fly. If you'd like more info, visit youtube.com forward slash Tucker Gott.